the thing you said at the end about you need to do what comes natural to you because there's so much output necessary to achieve anything. Struck, right? Yeah, it, it completely struck. Um, People create friction. Oh, I need to do it like Gary or I need to do it like William. They create friction. You know, like I'd love to be Sam Darnold. There's no right. throwing footballs outside that are going to get me there. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. you know, like I, people create friction and I'm trying to create, you know, like just a stream of, of pass throughs because the output is the variable. Just, yeah, just completely following through. Like I, I think about that where there's, there's not really any rules where people will say that they'll follow one person's content or this person's content and they'll use a certain approach. But basically my question for you was, so earlier on life was very simple for me. I was like this economic student who dropped out to pursue acting and I got maniacal about acting and I did a whole lot in one year. Um, but then like I felt this thing inside where I was like, this isn't moving fast enough for me. There's so much more I can do. I have time on my hands. I've got potential. So I started an online fitness coaching business. I wrote two books and um, I just started building other things, built my YouTube, built a podcast. When I got into your content, I was like, ooh, time to get on every platform. So <laughs> I, I, I built up this podcast. I, I started um, you know, doing the pillar content strategy where I would put a lot out. And I, I got myself to a point now where um, I've always liked biting off more than I can chew, but I've got myself to a point now where it's like, there are so many plates spinning every day. Do you, do you have the humility to shut things down and have perceived losses? Huh. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't feel like, like I'm at a point yet where I need to shut it down. I just don't know how to prioritize all of it yet. That's an excuse. Okay. What I mean by that is prioritization comes in the thing that needs it the most. It's like children. If you have four children, you need to prioritize the child that's most struggling at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Prioritization's easy. Humility okay. to shut something down is hard. Then I probably lack the humility. <laughs> it makes sense. Notice how I go to something that's not so obvious, but is the fucking answer. Mm -hmm. Humility. Mm -hmm. Humility to say, you know, people, people with a lot of ambition and energy, um, whether they are gabbers like me and just talk shit, like I'm gonna fucking, everything's gonna be humongous. Or if they're quiet, but they still have five to seven people that they value very much knowing what they're up to. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody right now is doing things that they don't wanna be doing because they don't have the humility to take the micro loss. Mm. Okay. I could think of a few things like that. that of course, you, like immediately, right? Yeah. Like this is how yeah. humans work. Like immediately say I'm talking, you're like, yeah, I'm not, I'm, fuck the podcast. Like it's taking too yeah. much time. Like, people are <laughs> listening. Who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? Yeah. I do yeah. it all, bro. I do it all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I fucking have so many, I'm working on action figures right now. I've, I've been trying to launch a beanie brand for like four years. Like, like, you know, like I take the losses. Uh, I, I micro lose all the time. Like, mm -hmm. Just constantly but most people don't have the humility. Um, and I think humility has to be one of the great emerging, if we do not, if my audience, let me just go actually very simple. If my audience doesn't quadruple down on humility post COVID, it would be a real missed opportunity because I'm very passionate about it. I communicate it, I articulate well. You know, here we are where, we, you know, for you, brother, and, and William and a lot of other people watching right now, literally, I genuinely believe in the next, you know, week, people, like a hundred people right now just decided to drop something that's gonna completely open them up. Mm -hmm. People are talking about prioritizing because they don't have the humility to drop three things. They already know. They just need the encouragement and the courage and the shield. They need this video to point to to be like, well, Gary Vee said, and I, by the way, my great love of my life is being the shield that allows people to do things that make them happy. I want people to point to me. I want kids to point their parents to me. I want parents yeah. to point their kids to me. I want somebody who, you know, stops doing their podcast and their mom makes a snarky comment and say, see, you always fucking fail to show this video and say, fuck you, mom. You know what I mean? Like, I want that. But, well, part of the mindset for me behind it is like, and this comes from like the past with like weight training and sports and stuff like that, is that I know what that pressure does to me. You like, like it? 
I, yeah, I, I like it. And I feel like having that weight on my shoulders sometimes. You, let me, so I do too. Let mm-hmm. me tell you the difference between you and I. I don't have this question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why I'm on this show. What I mean by that though is I want you to figure out if you've made the ideology within yourself that you've created an ideology that you like it or do you actually like it. It's a very important point, brother, because yeah. because if you're asking it, if you're sitting on it, you may not like it as much as you think. I, I like it, but I don't want to drop the ball on anything. That's that's the way that I feel. I feel like I, I, I need to follow through. You have to. If you're and, a juggler, you drop balls. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's fucking humility. I love spinning 49 plates and watching 13 crash because it keeps me in a learning mindset and I don't give a fuck if the people who watching me spin the plate laugh at me when I drop the plate because I look at them and ask them, don't worry about my plates. How many plates are you fucking spinning? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's humility. I'm telling you. Do you do you ever drop the the plate on so many things, and then you just keep piling more plates on, and yes. you're like, maybe I should just focus on the plates that I have spinning. Always. Yeah. I hope you're not dwelling on the plate that broke. It fucking broke. No, I I honestly don't dwell. Like I don't dwell at all. I I totally hear you on that. Good. Uh, I I just feel an obligation to the people that I work with and a lot of different things to to pull through for them. And you, I don't you, can pull, you can pull through for them in different ways. Like if you have to drop that thing, you can hire two of them on the thing that's working or help them mm-hmm. get another, t- like we're gonna have to go through layoffs. I'm helping people get other jobs. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got you. you I got see you. what I mean? You can, yeah. you can, You don't have to keep them paid on that plate. You can go help them be in the fork business or they can come and help you spin the plate that's actually fucking working. Yeah, I got you. So just reallocate, move things around and keep moving forward. Okay. And and a lot of times the person that you're letting down, you actually deep down know that they're not good enough and don't do what I did for a long time, which is carry them out of compassion. You know, what you wanna do is set them up with candor and give them another opportunity somewhere else. That was a real shortcoming of mine. I carried dead weight for years, decades, because I'm a nice person, but ultimately I created a resentment relationship with that individual and they weren't growing with me so I've learned only recently in the last half decade that it is okay to let people go especially if you're willing to help them post you yeah okay I got you I've got I've got one little follow-up question real fast Um, I'm sure that you got people that do this for you but do you in terms of your whole game plan do you create like a weekly schedule or a daily schedule or do you do you just roll with the punches? Oh, I'm I'm admined out. I have three admins and every minute, I mean, literally, if you looked at my calendar right now, every minute of my day is, I'm literally booked right now, every minute, no gaps until 9 yeah. p.m. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have okay. no, I have literally no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Google <laughs> Calendar tells me every second. It's all happening in flow with infrastructure. Gotcha. And okay. that's how I'm bouncing from so many things. You need to understand that plans are shit. It's good to have a plan, but but the ability to adjust to reality is the ultimate. And let me tell you this. So what I've been doing, um, I actually had a conversation with one of my mentors who works at TED. So it's my dream to work at TED. Um, TED Talks, you know, all of that. Yes, One I'm of my there. big dreams to work there. Um, so I'm totally passionate about their vision and really aligned with their mission. I so think I'm, I, I don't know if she's still the CEO, but I, I might be able to, you need to email me at Gary at VaynerMedia. Yeah. I, I still know the president. I don't know if Absolutely. she still holds the job, but she clearly knows a lot of people there and I might be able yeah. to help you. So don't Absolutely. forget. Absolutely, that'd be fantastic. I will, I will not forget. Okay. But. I was talking to one of my mentors who actually works at TED and we were basically everything in my life. I try and look through the lens of everything for me, not against me. So what I try and do is to, if something happens, Corona, okay, how can we make this but work? Then, Katie, I, then I need you to stay true to that and not say frustrated yeah. about the gap year fucking Vermont thing. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I, I have know. to continue let's, that. Let's yeah. sit here. Like I'm okay. being serious with you because I see the potential in you. Yeah, thank you. You're thank welcome. You. Your energy is just sweet and fucking awesome. <laughs> thank you. But then you need and to listen to me right now. 
Yeah. Like fuck that frustration. Don't get caught up yeah. in the bubble of what you're supposed to feel. You're not frustrated. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not, frustrated. I'm not, I'm excited I know you're not. about it. I can feel yeah. it. This yeah. is an important part of the evolution. This is the training. We're on some Jedi shit now. Yeah, yeah. I actually don't believe that you're frustrated. No, I'm not. I'm excited about it. But you're parroting words from others. You're taking the energy from the ones that are. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So that's why we need to focus on this moment because this is a good okay. moment for you. Let's and do you. it. Let's do it. No more parrot. No more parroting other energy. No, Speak absolutely. your fucking truth. So you're gonna be in a gap year your whole fucking you. life, Katie. Yeah, no, I was looking at that. That's definitely what You know what, what I mean? I was... Like gap year, meaning doing what yeah. the fuck you want. Absolutely. And I'm still trying to figure out what exactly that looks like. Right now I have a personal development don't, Instagram don't, page. Don't, don't, uh, I'll let you finish in a minute, but don't, yeah, no worries. don't put it into process. You already know exactly what it looks like. You just told yeah. me what you're gonna do. My, I always knew I was gonna do it too. You know what my yeah. process looked like? I worked in my dad's liquor store for 15 years. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm do you think, do you think that was the like clear that. path to fucking, <laughs> like to impacting people's lives, carrying fucking cases of Corbell Brute into people's <laughs> fucking, you know, you know, back seats? No. Yeah. If you're into patience, then you're not overvaluing process up front. Yeah, absolutely. No, and to fall in love with that process is something that I've been definitely holding core to who I'm trying to become. Katie, do you know what I'm basically yeah. telling you? What? It's not gonna matter. What I yeah. mean by that is, it doesn't matter if you go to Vermont or if you go to a gap year. If you're an intern at TED or if you work at a coffee shop in Aspen or if you go in a car with your friends and drive cross country or if you go to Ireland yeah. for three years, if it's your destiny, if it's what you're about, you will absolutely process through. And so whether you have an Instagram account that has 43 followers on it or not, whether you go viral yeah. on TikTok or not, whether you, you execute on the thing that happens 19 years from now that's invented for, by somebody, you, we haven't even started and you need to stay on the macro mission and not overvalue the micro mission. Yeah, The answer absolutely. is actually it's just not gonna matter.